the Atlanta Falcons at seven and ten last year. Uh, they they had some big wins last year, and a lot of it came from their defense, but also a lot of their losses came from their defense. Um, they have an eight and a half uh, over under from Vegas. They were second last in attempts and second last in yardage and passing, um, but they were number one in rushing attempts last year. Obviously, early on, Mariota was just pretty much running the ball all the time. Um, and then they were number three in rushing yardage. Again, when your quarterback's running a ton too, that helps. So that's why I think people have this Bijan, and we'll get to him in a second, so high. But let's talk about Desmond Ritter. A guy who is coming into a sophomore year campaign, getting a little bit under his belt at the end of the season, didn't look great. But let's not forget that he also didn't have Kyle Pitts or Drake London to really throw to, so he was he struggled at times because of that. But his best game was Week 18 against Tampa Bay. With I believe London was uh, in that game, but Mac Hollins definitely was. Uh, or sorry, not Mac Hollins. Yeah, um, yeah Mac Hollins is on the team now, but uh, um. Drake London was there. He was 19 for 30 for 224 and two touchdowns. Solid outing, not terrible. Um, you have decent receivers. Uh, you got one good receiver in Drake London, and you got one good receiver uh, tight end in Kyle Pitts. And then they just add Mac Hollins. Is Desmond Ritter somebody that you see taking a jump because of the additions of B. John Robinson? Uh, and if you have a healthy Kyle Pitts and Drake London, or is this still one of those quarterbacks that this team is going to rely and heavily be based off of uh, B. John Robinson this whole my, season? My biggest question is what backup quarterback is being taken in front of him? He's quarterback 33. Yeah, he's quarterback 33. Well, that's what I said. Kyle Trask and, and Baker Mayfield were 30, 30 and 32. So yeah. one of those guys is going to drop below him and he'll be the last one off the board. So, uh, I mean, it's it's yeah, it's I, a big it's a big question mark. Is do we see a, a big jump in him? Do we see any kind of jump in him? Do we see kind of a future in in Desmond Ritter at quarterback there? And I think that a lot of people are high on this Atlanta Falcons offense, and they were not a very good offense last year in terms of passing. And you can blame Mariota all you want, but Ritter came in and you know wasn't really that much better. Um, and he still has growing pains. I think Drake London. Like they have some weapons receiving wise, but there's not a ton of depth on this team. Like their 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 wide receiver core is not deep, and like their running their running game is good. And I think they bolstered their offensive line, and I think they're going to see some more uh, potency from that rushing game. And they were what, third. Yeah, third they do in the have league? one of the top. They do have one of the more top rated uh, offensive lines, and they, they also top. have. Yeah, and they also have one of the top easiest strength of schedules preseason ranking wise, uh, especially for the running backs, which is another nod for the Bijan believers. Is what I'll call them. The <laughs> we're going to come up with a name for this. Yeah, um, for yeah. now they're the Bijan believers. The Bijan believers. Um. um yeah. So I mean, yeah, I, 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 I there's not much to say about Red. Yeah, there's. I'm not drafting him. I'm not, I'm not touching him. Like he's going to be a waiver wire purely ad if he just starts to produce. But um, I think that he really hamstrings both Drake London and Kyle Pitts. Um, yeah, that's and, the only thing I I would say about him is that exactly. And I until think he we, limits we them. Kind of see, yeah, I think he limits them, and I think until we see kind of uh, you know more of what what he he can be or what you know what he is. Um, and it's not not like a scenario where like you know Kenny Pickett's able to kind of develop up because of the talented receivers that they have on that team. Um, this is a, this is where they're basically putting Ritter in and just like don't mess this game up for us. Like we're gonna well, run the, the ball. About, the we're gonna play solid defense. Like, don't don't mess this game up for us. Don't the thing turn about the Ritter up. though, it, it was it's been his accuracy since college. Like even people who watched him in college will say that he was accurate sometimes and he was inaccurate other times and he struggled with that and unless he gets better at that i i've always to me it's been the problem is if matt ryan were under the helm when when kyle pitts was there you know and he had a thousand yard uh rookie season like i was confident in kyle pitts it just sucked they didn't get any touchdowns but after that once the court qb changed i had no confidence in kyle pitts because uh, he is such a good athlete but you still got to get the ball near and around him so you know, to me, Ritter hamstrings the receiving core. 
but he, he can rely on somebody like Bijan Robinson. And coming into this here, he's going as the RB3 off the board, nine overall. Too rich for my blood on a team that was seven and 10 last year. And I don't care if they were number one in attempts and number three in rushing yards last year. You take the rushing yards away from Mariota. You still had a thousand yard uh, rusher in Tyler Algier. So the rushing yard, which is there from another running back. And to me, Bijan Robinson, yes, everybody's liking him too. Saquon Barkley and a generational talent, but everybody knew Saquon Barkley was going to touch the ball like 400 times when he came in as a rookie. I don't think Atlanta is going to do that with Bijan. I don't think it, it, it would make sense to do that with Bijan with the, with the people you have behind him. The fact that Tyler Algier last year finished his RB 22 on 210 carries for uh, 1,035 yards and three touchdowns. Um, I think he's going to be using the passing game a lot because he is a good receiving back out there. And I think he's going to have, uh, Rush is taken away by Algier. And I think they're going to move Cordero Patterson maybe more to a receiving role and have him more in sort of uh, maybe Wildcat in some other situations a little bit different because I think Algier surplanted him as a better option in the running, uh, true running back form there. But you can't knock Patterson's not, he's still there. So and he ran for me, almost 700 yards last year. Yeah. Yeah. And he averaged so, 4.8 4. yards per carry and had eight touchdowns last year. Yeah, with Bijan Robinson, I think people, you, I think you, you people are really. Three, well, here, let me say this. If you're taking Bijan Robinson three overall, it's because you're expecting Bijan Robinson and you are taking three overall because you're expecting him to outperform everybody but CMC and Eckler, who are going above him right now. And some people are drafting him above Eckler. But in order to outperform Saquon Barkley or Nick Chubb, you're talking about he needs to have over 16 to 1700 total yards and he needs to have at least 11 touchdowns cuz that's what i see coming from both those guys at, at the end of the at the end of the day and so i just don't see the rookie coming in and doing that on a team that at some point is going to have to abandon the run and pass to win some football games you only won 7 games last year a running back's not going to win you three more to make you go in the positive i mean just look at Saquon Barkley with the giants when he came in the guy was rookie of the year and that team didn't make the playoffs and you still had, you had a super bowl MVP at the helm. Yeah. You know, a I better mean, quarterback. I mean, you're like the worst, <laughs> you're a better brother. quarterback. You're like the worst Manning brother. Yeah. Only two of them played football in the NFL. So yeah, I agree with you, but I'm just saying he still have, he still was a two time super bowl MVP and, and champion. At the helm, you not Desmond Ritter. Yeah, thanks to a really good defense. But no, I mean, let's let back to back to Bijan. It's like, all right, we we we've kind of harped on this a, a lot. So let me let me get to the highlight points. Okay, he is not Zeke. He is not Saquon Barkley. When those guys came in the league, not only did they have either the number one rushing uh, offense in football. Uh, and the best offensive line in football with three future Hall of Famers on the offensive line with Zeke. He's talking about Zeke. Uh, or you had Saquon where he came in and there was literally no one else. No one else. And there was no one else in Dallas either. So if you want to give the comps to those guys and say, oh, well, he's going to have a rookie season like they had rookie seasons, you're forgetting that there is a second-year player in Tyler Elgier there and Cordell Patterson, who has been super efficient as a running back since he's come to the Falcons and transitioned to a running back. Yeah. So I'm not saying that Bijan is not the most talented running back in this backfield. He is. But this week it came out. He is third on the depth chart. Saquon Barkley and Zeke were never third on the depth chart. Ever. Even an unofficial depth chart. Even, Even an never. unofficial depth chart. They were never there. So that has to say something in terms of how they plan to use these guys. And, you know, like Jono said, it's the, if I'm the Falcons, like you don't know what you have in Ritter. And are you going to go and give Bijan 300 plus carries just to give him 300 plus carries just so people can be justified in fantasy football? No, this is the NFL we're talking about. So start thinking about it like from an NFL perspective. Is this team to make ready to make a playoff push right now? No, they've set up a bunch of pieces though. They've set up a bunch of pieces. 
Their one issue is quarterback, and they don't know what they have in quarterback right now. So you're not going to give a top 10 pick in running back, and you're just going to overwork him and get him hurt. And and when you have other guys there that are productive that you don't have a lot of money invested in. So Algier, I don't see a scenario at all that Bijan takes 60% of the, the, the workload. I don't see it 60%. At most, I would say 50, 55% of the workload that he's going to get there. And at 50 and 55% of the workload, he's Tony Pollard. So evaluate him at Tony Pollard's value. Which is yeah. See that's can... that's where I that's where I differ with you. I think he's gonna he is gonna have higher than sixty percent of the workload, but to me, I think, and this is what you got to think to yourself. Like, if you're saying he's not going to be, you're drafting him behind Zeke and and Eckler or uh, CMC and Eckler. That means you're drafting him behind two guys that are going to get. They're not getting hundred percent of the workload. Other guys are getting Elijah Mitchell is going to get his, and they're going to give Eckler rest too as well. But you got you have a guy that's going to command both the rushing and receiving game at a high, high, high percentage. And to me, when you look back at those two rookie years, you're talking about for Saquon, he was number one in PPR, number two in standard. The dude had two hundred only two hundred sixty one attempts in the in the in the rushing game, which I think is actually a good number for Bijan to get here. But he had ninety one receptions. In the passing game, so you're, that's what that's what you have to there. expect. That yeah, you have to expect that from Bijan for him to get to that that place you want him to be. And for Zeke, he had 32 receptions, but he had 322 carries. And I don't see Bijan Robinson tipping the 300 carry mark. It would be idiotic for them to waste a year on Bijan by doing that and, and not getting Algier to get out and, and mix it up a bit. And, you know, maybe he finishes with 50 receptions, 57 receptions, and maybe he finishes with 260 yards. But you're talking about someone, an Eckler last year, who had 300 total ch- touches. And that 300 touches that that could possibly come to Bijan, it needs to be touchdown as well. Because you're talking about Zeke, who had 15 rushing touchdowns that season. You're talking about Saquon, who I think had 13 overall total touchdowns, I think, and or more. Uh, and then you're talking about Eckler, who had 18 last year. So it's not just the touches and the yardage and the volume. It's go- like, is this team going to score enough points? And is he going to be the one scoring those points? That it, it just, to me, it doesn't, if I want somebody at that third spot, I'm taking Saquon and or Chubb right there. And then I could argue Derrick Henry should go above him as well. Yeah. I mean, I would say Chubb, Henry, then Saquon, but I'm not a Giants fan. So I don't, yeah. I don't. I also, I also, I also see. I don't kiss the ground from, that Saquon walks on. After, after he said he had no problem saying. Yeah, well, I also see. Fans. <laughs> he didn't say he didn't have a problem. He said I may have to. Yeah. But he obviously didn't. No, I mean, he was like, trying like, to get leverage. That's so, all it was. Yeah, I mean, listen, listen, anyway, I'm not knocking Bijan. Like, I still would value him in the like. I think he is a perfect candidate for early second round. Um, so obviously I put value on him, but for people that are drafting him in a top, you know, top five pick, I think it's a really big mistake. And I think you're drafting him for what his ceiling is, not really what his floor is. I think of the, of the first, of, I would say of the first seven guys off the board, he's the person that has the lowest floor out of any of those. And I'm, I'm, I'm not counting injury. Okay. So like take injury out of this. He has the lowest floor out of any of those. He has a lower floor than Travis Kels. He has a lower floor than Tyreek Hill, lower floor than Chase and Jefferson, CMC, all those guys. He has a lower floor then because we just don't know what this backfield split's going to look like. And if you're just assuming because they took him in a top 10 pick that all of a sudden he's going to command 300 touches on the season when they have, again, they were the third best rushing offense last year with Tyler Algier and Cordell Patterson and Marcus Mariota at the helm. Well, that's what and, everybody's argument is like, oh, if they did it with those guys, like but they're not going Bichon's anywhere. Gonna blow up. But yeah. they're not going anywhere. Like this isn't this isn't the, the Cowboys scenario where DeMarco Murray is is aging out and they replace him with a younger Zeke Elliott. Where DeMarco Murray the year before Zeke got there still ran for 1800 yards. Like this isn't that scenario. So Tyler Algier is a second year player. He was a rookie last year. Like he's not, he, he didn't get hurt. He's healthy. And then Patterson, who is a wide receiver by trade, is a running back. So, in terms of 
the 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 receiving out of the backfield, I think Cordell Patterson could command some of that. I mean, he had uh, 20, 20 something receptions last year. So twenty one reception, thirty one targets. The year before, he had fifty two receptions, sixty nine targets. All right, and uh, and those are the two years that he was truly in a running back position. And so, yeah, Bijan's going to get his get and get his work. And please, guys, stop freaking out about his his run, route running ability and in, in against a backup, backup. Uh, a backup linebacker. Like, stop! Every running back is doing that. Look at Saquon. Yeah. Look at every every look single at running back. Saquon's is doing highlight that. against a backup. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, let, uh, we can move on from Bijan. I'm I would say please. out there, I'm a little higher on Bijan than you are. Um, yeah, I would take him. I, depending upon who goes in the first round, I would take him in the first round. If, if a bunch of running backs went before, but if I'm sitting there at the end of the first round and Nick Chubb's still sitting there and Derek Henry's still sitting there, I'm going with those guys over Bijan. But I would take him on the swing in the second round as my second running back with the upside there. Um, Algier is another one that I'd be happy to snag as a, as a popular handcuff at the end there too, because he may have his own role in this offense. We're unsure yet, but if he gets, if he gets the sh- the, the share of uh, Tony Pollard, on like the Cowboys did last year, that's still a solid RB two and a flex play. And who knows, he may punch it, you know, some touchdowns in for you too, as well. Um, receiving wise, the high notes here are Drake London. Uh, they did acquire Matt Collins who last year had 57 receptions for 690 yards nice and four deal. touchdowns. Um, he assists Kyle Pitts in spreading the field, which is good. He's a big, fast, athletic guy. I think that is a bonus for Desmond Ritter, and it actually helps Drake London, who is more inter- intermediate passing. Um, and then you've got Kyle Pitts at the tight end position here. Um, in terms of Drake London and, and Mac Collins, Mac Collins is wide receiver 98. He's a waiver wire ad at this point for you. Uh, he's off the charts. Uh, nobody's really going to be drafting him to draft him. Uh, Drake London, however, he's going wide receiver 25, 60th overall. There's still a couple of receivers outside of that are a little bit, uh, after him that I like better. Um, but then again, their situations are also question marks. Um, so in, in, in my opinion, his biggest game was that final game that Desmond Ritter had the two touchdowns and that was the, uh, game with, uh, against Tampa Bay at the end of the season. So he finished at wide receiver 37. He didn't really have a full season. I'm not fading Drake London. I'm just not, ta- I'm taking him as a flex receiver to me. He's a wide receiver too. Well, let me tell plays. you, Drake, Drake London is being taken as a 25th wide receiver off the board, 60th overall. That's what, yeah, that's what I was saying. And, and the people that are going after him immediately after are Christian Kirk, are Mike Williams, Christian Kirk, Chris Godwin, Brandon Ayuk, George Pickens, Mike Evans, Tyler Lockett, Marquise Brown. I'll yeah, take I, like I said, the guys those. around him, I would take all of them over him. I would take every uh, one of those it, guys over him. So, and then Kyle Pitts, 66 overall, tight end five off the board. That's too rich for my blood in a situation where to be tight end five, it doesn't take that much because we know after Kelson Andrews, it kind of drops off and it could be mixed bag there. But 700 yards, he, four touchdowns, tight end five, tight end six. Yeah. But to me, he had 28 receptions. He was hurt last year in 10 games, 28 for 356 and two touchdowns. He wasn't on pace for those 700 yards. He's going ahead of Waller, who I think Waller, if, if you take both guys healthy, Waller's got the better uh, better chance to be, and has been there, can do it. Um, obviously, you're taking someone like TJ Hawkinson over him. Um, but Evan Ingram's another guy last year who could finish in the side of the top five if he does what he did before too. Um, so to me, Kyle Pitts at tight end five at 66 overall, I probably would take him late seventh round. I wouldn't be getting him at 66 overall because again, you're talking about Drake London and Pitts being six picks apart. Look at all those receivers that are there that have a better chance to outperform Kyle Pitts. And yeah, I know he's a tight end, but I think there's other tight, the tight ends that are right there in that tier with Pitts can either do the same or may have a better opportunity. Yeah, and that's exactly part of my argument on outside the top four tight ends. That's I like. First of all, Waller's playing the amount of the amount of numbers that are on the jersey behind you. Um, so, <laughs> but. Yeah, I mean, you, you, I mean, you knock on Waller, and I'm I'm telling you right now, the dude's going to end up finishing uh, top three can. tight end. 
Yeah, he can. And he and because he, he has too. I'm just saying he will because he's the number one target for Daniel he, Jones this year. Yeah, yeah. He will he lead. Can. And Saquon and Saquon will be number two. <laughs> so the the Giants are making the playoffs. Yeah, ba- just barely like they did last yeah. year, <laughs> where uh, Saquon was the number two, number one in targets, or and, no, and number one in receptions, number two in targets, or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Pitts is just he's he kind of falls into that next category where like I can make an argument for any one of those guys to kind of be in any order. Um, yeah, I, I, it's a guy that he, yeah, you, I, I I agree with you. He's too rich for me. Uh, where his ADP is, I'll let someone else deal with that. I'll wait and a couple rounds and get a guy that's probably going to throw up uh, very similar numbers to him. I'll throw up. I, I'll get a guy four rounds after that throws up twenty less points than him. That's I'm I'm fine with that, especially at the tight end. Yeah, position. end of the season. And points per game, it's like a quarter of a point per game. Yeah. So, yeah, um, he does have the, but he has the upside and he has a high ceiling because of his athleticism. He's a freak. It's just a matter of the quarterback play at the end of the day. So, yeah, can um, we talk about finishes- young? Way- 